right, y'all ready to get in the Word tonight? All right, let's get into this. Um, turn to 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12, if you brought your Bible. And if you didn't, that's okay. We do sell Bibles over there. I think they're, they start around five bucks and then they go up from there. Uh, verse 12, 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12. I know you, some of you got uh, the Bible app on your phone, the Holy Bible, Bible Gateway, whatever you use. Obviously, those are great tools and, and really handy even for switching from one translation to another. Uh, I still, I really enjoy having an actual Bible. Um, and I encourage you to do that. You can make little notes in there and highlight things and underline things. So it'd be good and good be, uh, it would be a blessing to your life. Verse 12, this is 1 Timothy 6. It says, fight. Anybody ever been in a fight before? Oh, man, I was in a couple. I was in a couple fights. <laughs> Some people are like, eh. <laughs> yes, reluctantly. Well, never mind that. There's no such thing as a good fight. You know what I mean? Even if you win. Why? Because somebody had to lose in order for you to win. You know, so fights aren't good. I don't, I don't condone fights. I mean, I'm not saying I've never been in some, but um, it says fight the good fight. Oh, so there's a good fight. The Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Fight the good fight of faith. That's what we're going to be talking about tonight. That's what we're going to be talking about here in the, um, I don't know how long to come, but we're going to be talking a lot about faith. There is a fight of faith, and I'm telling you, man, the enemy, he's trying to get at you. He is, man, he is, he's pulling out all the stops. Have you guys ever, like, um, like you and your friends get together and prank somebody else? Have, have any of you ever done that before? And you know how like sometimes that escalates and it just somebody takes it way too far. You know what I mean? The enemy is at that stage where he has taken it way too far. He's trying to get at God's children. He, I mean, he, he done overplayed his hand. And, and it's time that we rise up and take our place. We are in a fight. Whether you like fights or not, you're in a fight. I don't care. Get over it. But the Bible says to fight the good fight of faith. And that's what I love about it. We got the best trainer in the world. We got the Word of God. We got the Holy Spirit. You got pastors who love you. And let me just tell you, I, I'm making a commitment tonight. We are going to be better prepared than ever before. I'm going to require more of myself. I'm going to meet with our leaders so that, like, whoever walks through these doors, if you, if you connect with a leader, we're going to be here for you. We are going to be prayed up. We're going to be prepared, ready to help you in life. Because I do not take it lightly that you have walked through these doors tonight. I mean, I'm just like, I, I walk out here and, and, we're, we're, and young people are worshiping God. And I'm just like, I'm just humbled. And I'm, and I'm saying, God, I, I will give you every ounce of my energy to reciprocate and be ready. I, I'm telling you, we're going we're gonna to replace this speaker right here because I think we might have blown it up. Okay, and we're going to, administratively, we're going to meet with the leaders uh, who are a part of this. And we're going to strengthen one another and we're going to be here for you. And this is going to be a place with strong young, young men and women who know God, who know his power, know his power financially, know his, his power in their physical body as it pertains to healing, know his power as it pertains to boldness and confidence on the calling that's on your life, in the steps that you're taking. You're taking one step at a time, and you're like, man, I know, I'm, I'm writing the plan of God for my life. This will not be a place of people who are confused and like, I think I'm going to... Uh, whatever. No, this will be people like, no, I've prayed and the Lord show me my next step is. And the reason I knew that next step is because I took that last step. And that starts for many of you in this room. It starts tonight. You say, God, whatever the step is, I, I'm taking it. I'm taking it. I've got friends. Uh, you know, it's interesting <laughs> when I was thinking about it, it's good to have friends with boats. I was like, even if I had a friend with a boat right now, I don't know what day I would be able to go to the lake. And, and I, I have no problem with that. I love being here. I love building the church. I love getting to serve. Today I got to serve in some different areas and be a part of, uh, of Kids Church. And I was just like so humbled. I was like, God, that was, that was awesome. Thank you for letting me be a part of that. And so your life is your life. And you're making choices. And I'm stirring it up tonight. Like, I'm, honestly, I'm an instigator because I was a middle child. And so I was like starving for attention. Any middle children in the room? All right, we'll pray for you guys later. <laughs> 
So I like to stir it up, man. I was picking on my little sister. I was like nagging my, my big brother. And, you know, my dad would like turn on the light. And he'd be like, one more time. One more time. You know, and he would turn off the light. We're on the way home from church on Wednesday night. I'm like, I got to do one more time. You know, and I'd do something. <laughs> Slams on the brakes. Like, when do we get home? You're getting a spanking. <sighs> okay, I overplayed my hand. I took it too far. I like to stir things up. And I'm here to stir you up tonight to say, follow me as I follow Christ. What does that mean? Pastor Greg wants us all to quit our jobs and work. No, I'm saying follow God's plan for your life. It's not too late. There's nobody in the room. It's too late. Well, I, 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 no, no, I don't care if you got uh, $68 million in debt and 14 kids and you feel like you can't follow God's plan for your life. You can. He'll help you. He'll show you one step at a time. It doesn't matter. People disqualify themselves, and really it's, it's the enemy. Why? Because he's the father of lies. The Bible even says that those lies come from within him. They originated in him. He's the father of lies. So don't let the enemy lie to you. Every single person in this room, we've all been lied to. We don't measure up. We're not good enough. We're not the right color. We're not the right size. We're not the right height. Our family's not good enough. I don't come from the right background. Everyone has, has had thoughts of disqualification. Well, you don't know about my abortion. Well, you don't know uh, that I've already had sex. You don't know that I did this. You don't know that I did that. Really? What you did is bigger than blood of Jesus? Absolutely not. <laughs> no. Do you remember when I was like slick over here on the floor? Remember when I was crying? Because Jesus spilled his blood every last drop I dare you to come to me after service and tell me something you did that's bigger than his blood <laughs> because there is nothing there's nothing bigger than the blood of Jesus your little mistake get over it stop rehearsing it stop in the name of Jesus. See, the problem is the enemy comes with the thought. He comes with the lie. And what happens? People entertain the lie because they have not renewed their mind. And they begin to think about it. And it becomes a part of their psyche. It becomes a part of their thinking. That's the power of the word of God. It will wash you clean. It will renew your mind. It will renew your way of thinking. Faith is what we're talking about. Faith is not like, what faith are you? Um, I'm assembly of God, where are you? <laughs> I'm Baptist, I'm born, born and bred Baptist, you know what I mean? Faith <laughs> is not that. Faith is a lifestyle. Faith is a way of thinking. Faith is a way of responding when adversity comes to you. When you find out your parents who you thought were the best ever are getting a divorce. That's when faith kicks in says, you know what? That's on them. I'm not delighting in that. I'm not excited about that. My soul hurts, but I will follow God and he will sustain me and he will see me through. That's what faith is. It's so simple. We've made it so hard. No longer will we complicate the word of God. Amen. Amen. Faith is not a movement that started back in 2007 and kind of fizzled out in 2012. It is a lifestyle. And the thing is, faith can be your lifestyle, but you have a choice to make. We're going to talk, as, we, as it goes on, we're going to talk about what faith is, how it comes. We'll see you guys later. Thank you for coming. Thank you, guys. We're going to talk about what it is, how it comes, the reward of faith, those kinds of things. But first, we have to discuss why faith. Everybody say, why faith? The answer is because God is a God of faith. That's how he operates. And we're to operate like him. Faith is how God functions. Turn your Bible, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. Actually, for sake of time, because of time. Let me just, uh, let me just read it to you. Hebrews eleven three. It says, by faith, everybody say by faith. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Let's read that again. 
By faith we understand in Jesus' name, Lord help us, show us, reveal it to us, that the worlds were framed by the word of God. The worlds were framed, the stars in the sky. Let there be light. Do you understand? You guys know that, and we're going to probably look at it just because um, there may be people in the room who are not familiar with that. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3 in the Passion Translation says, Faith empowers us to see the universe was created and beautifully coordinated by the power. Everybody say the power. The power of God's words. He spoke and the invisible realm gave birth to all that is seen. It was absolutely supernatural. Notice when God spoke, supernatural things happened. Genesis Chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning. Everybody say, in the beginning. God created the heaven and the earth. God created. God created. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said. Everybody say, God said. God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light. And it was good. Everybody say, good. And God divided the light from darkness. And God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And evening and the morning were the first day. Verse 6. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. And let it divide the waters from the waters. So God did all of this creation. We don't have time to go through it all. But God did all of this creation through what? Through speaking. So we see from the very beginning. And we're going to talk about what faith is. We're going to talk about why it's important. We're going to talk about what it looks like and the reward of faith. All of those things which are great. But at, at the root of our foundation, we've talked about the importance of foundation. Yeah. If your foundation's wrong, then they close down. What was that, that, that sandwich shop that they closed down? Jimmy John's. I like the Italian. Did y'all ever like the Italian? Anybody like Jimmy John's? Like when it first came? You know when stuff first comes, you're like, yeah! And then you burn it out and you're like, no, never again. <laughs> okay, but the found, there was a problem with the foundation. And they literally shut that building down and they did some kind of crazy, almost like the tower that was leaning, remember? Not the cool lean, but like the, hey, going down lean. They sh like that happened in our town. The foundation was wrong, right? Does, does anybody remember that? And they put up the fence. So the foundation of our beliefs, why faith is important, not just what it is and, and all those things, is because God is a faith God. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 1. If they got it on the screen, I'll read it. Otherwise, I'll read it from my Bible, even though I already know what it says. Hey, there it is right there. Therefore, be imitators. Everybody say imitators. imitators. Imitators of God as dear children. You know, like when kids are like, and they like mimic you and they say what you say. <laughs> and you're like, stop. And they're like, stop. <laughs> Imitator. We're to be imitators of God. If God is a faith God, what would make sense for us to be? faith, right? We would operate in faith the same way he did. So we're instructed in the word of God to be imitators of God. Psalm 33 verse 6 says, by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made and the host of them by the breath of, by the breath of his mouth. This was not like him burning oxygen. This is him making declarations, speaking, speaking things into existence. You don't believe me? Go to McDonald's and tell me you want a number three and see what happens. <laughs> Speak it into existence. And tell them you want some of that buffalo sauce in a 20 piece. Just kidding. Don't get all that stuff. <laughs> buffalo sauce does sound good right now. Does anybody like buffalo sauce? Man, it's like magic. <laughs> so good. See, but we, we, don't, we don't think anything of it like when we make a declaration because this is what we want at Wendy's. We want uh, whatever you get at Wendy's. Remember when they closed Wendy's at 8? I don't leave church by 8. I could never go to Wendy's. It was always closed. So I was going to the, the Golden Arches, you know. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I was loving it. But the thing is, we don't think anything about making a declaration at the drive-thru. At Starbucks. I would like a skinny uh, soy fat free with extra whip. Uh, you know what I mean? Like this big long thing. I'm like, oh my God. Can you just get like a coffee or a latte? Not saying who. Pastor Charity. Just kidding. <laughs> she says all oh, this big long thing with the half of, half of a half of this and a little shot of that. And I'm like, 
Oh God, oh God, oh God. I get frustrated every time, honestly. Uh, I should just get over it. But why do we not think anything about a declaration bringing something into our life at the drive through and yet we see in the Word of God that we are to make declarations over our life, over our finances. God is a faith God. We're to be imitators of Him as dear children. Then we're to be like Him and we're to speak and believe it to come into existence in our life. We're going to talk about just, we're going to talk about faith. Faith is so powerful. Faith gets results. All right, here we go. Um, our speaking is, is literally to be with, with power. Our speaking is to be with purpose. And that's the problem with sarcasm. And I used to be very guilty of sarcasm, and I'm actually getting better and better and better. What is sarcasm? Anybody know what sarcasm is? Cynicism? When you're cynical and you're, you're being sarcastic, you're saying something that is absolutely the opposite of what you want. Who, you know, who does that remind you of? Saying in the opposite of what you are. You're trash. You're garbage. You're no good. That's the enemy. So why would we as the children of God be so, we're, we've, we've been programmed because it's funny. Sarcasm is funny. But the problem is it's caused us to be loose with our words. It's caused us to say things that we don't mean and have no expectation of them coming to pass because we weren't trying to use our words with purpose. We were trying to be funny. And at the end of the day, that's not funny. Why? Because there will come a day when you need your words to be effective with power and with purpose. And the faith won't be there because you've not cultivated that in your life. This is not complicated, but we've just been too casual with God's word. We've been too casual with his way of doing things. It goes on in verse 9. This is Psalm 33, 9 to say, For he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. How are we going to get to this place where our words have power, where our words have purpose? Turn to Romans uh, chapter 10. We're going to look at verse 17. We'll have it for you on the, on the screen as well. I just want to talk a little bit about how faith actually comes. We know that God operates in faith, that he expects us to live by faith. We're going to read some scriptures as it pertains to that. It says, so then, this is verse 17, Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh, everybody say faith comes. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. See, this is not like a book, like a good sci-fi book or whatever. I, I don't really, I didn't ever read sci-fi books. I barely read the books I was supposed to read in Bible college. You know what I mean? Even though when I would read them, I'm like, man, this is so awesome. But the thing is, this is not a, a book. It's, it's not just a, a story, even though there's so many stories. This, this word is alive. This word will change your life. It will change your health. It will change your finances. It will change your relationship. See, joy that you see in our life, this is not fabricated. Peace that you see in our life, it's not fabricated. Our light is to shine, and God wants the exact same light and life and joy and peace that's alive on the inside of us to be alive on the inside of you. Why? Because he gets glory. See, when I allow him to work in my life, God gets glory for that. Why? Because I didn't go out there and earn anything I got. I didn't, I, nothing that I, I have in my life is what brought me that joy. It's only my Father God and my relationship with him and the fulfillment of the purpose and the plans that he has on my life. And he has the exact same plans and purposes for your life in the sense that there is something special, significant, and specific to your life that only he knows about. And there's such a, a freedom about that for us as pastors is that it's not our job to tell you what to do or tell you what your calling is. It's our job to equip you to hear his voice, to know his voice, and to be obedient to his things in faith that he's actually that good, in faith that he's actually going to provide for you, in faith that you're never going to regret it because you won't. You want to talk about regret? Let's talk about people who do their own thing. Let's p talk about people that come up with this big plan in their mind. I'm going to go here and do this and do that, and it's going to be awesome. And for a little while, it was awesome until they lost their house. And for a little while, it was awesome until their marriage fell apart. I, I, I just know that God's plan works. He's such a good father. He's so good. Better than, better than, than, uh, than we've known. And, and he's so good, it's been challenging for us to wrap our head around it. Why? Because as good as your earthly father is, whether good or bad, they, they can't even compare to how good he is. 
So what's, what gives? It's a trust issue. We don't trust him in the sense that it's like, you know what? My, my, my flesh wants to go here. My soul wants to go here because it feels safe. It feels comfortable. But my inward witness says to go there. That's where the rubber meets the road. Do you trust God? Do you yield your life to him? I encourage you to do it. That's what I did. My life turned out amazing. I didn't even know where Hobbs, New Mexico was. But God knew that I was called here. See, there's a calling for your life. It could be in the business world. You may be a manager. You may be an employee. You, you, you may be a real estate developer. You may be a real estate agent. You, I don't know. But the thing is, when you're in his place for your life, there's true fulfillment. There's peace. There's joy. There's provision. You're not out there chasing everything that everybody else is chasing in the little hamster wheel. Because we've seen it. It's unfortunate we don't rejoice when they lose those things. We don't rejoice when their marriage falls apart. I saw this awesome house the other day on Google Maps. And I asked the guy who lives the, by this place. I said, hey, who lives across the street from you? He's like, oh, that was so-and-so's place. That was $2.3 million. But, uh, you know, she got it in the divorce. Uh, but then she wasn't making the payments and he wasn't making the payments. So so-and-so bought it for a million dollars. What? That sounds like a bad investment, like 2.3 million down to a million. And then, you know, then this and this happened and so-and-so bought it for a couple hundred thousand dollars. And it was just like, my God, if only those people had known the love of God, if only they had known that God had a specific plan for their life, if only they had known his peace, his comfort, the things that he can do supernaturally in their marriage. See, the problem is not the $2.3 million home. The problem is trying to do life without God. It doesn't work. And if you guys will make a decision tonight, I'm going to live a life of faith. Why? Because my God is a faith God. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. We're going to look at that and we're going to close. Romans chapter 1. We're already in Romans. Go back to 1. 117. Romans 117. For therein is the righteousness, therein meaning in the good news, in the gospel. The Bible says therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. Everybody say from faith to faith. I didn't get to where I am in my faith walk overnight. But you know how I got to where I am in my faith walk? I took a step. I took a step to say, you know what, God, I do not know why you want me to go to that business because I know their business model, and I know that it would be like a miracle of God. You know, they say, oh, well, when you get the bonuses, everything's awesome. I'm like, well, what if you don't get the bonuses? It doesn't make sense, God. I'm not doing it. No. <laughs> and then it's like, okay, God. All right, fine. I'll do it. You know, I know better than to disobey God. And to see as it unfolded and as things transpired, and it was like, at first it looked like, oh, my gosh, I made the stupidest decision ever. But as things began to unfold, it's like, God, you knew this was here. You knew that it would unfold this way. You knew that it would play out this way. You knew that I would enjoy this. So awesome. He didn't do that for me because ultimately I would be on staff at a church or I would be uh, standing in the office of a pastor. He did that for me because I'm his son. See, you're his child. And if you're not, we're going to give you a chance to become his child tonight. He wants to do those kinds of things for you. But are you willing to make the tough decision to say, God, I, I, I don't see it, but I'm going to do it. See, faith, faith's crazy, right? Jesus said, uh, uh, Peter said, Jesus, if that's really you, bid me come. And Jesus didn't say, well, Peter, I just want to go ahead and encourage you. It definitely is me, and you go ahead and come, and it's going to be just fine, and the water's going to hold you up. What did he say? Come. See, we want like a uh, three or four page essay on God. Just go ahead and reassure me, God. That, so how, how, God? I don't see it. Now he's going to say, Come. And you're going to have to say, cool. Because I trust you. See, this is a room filled with people who trust God because they know he is trustworthy. Pastor Faith, <laughs> she did a trust fall <laughs> with a little kid. <laughs> it smashed the little kid against the wall. <laughs> she smashed the little kid against the wall. Did you, were you there when it happened, yes, me? I was like, she trusted him. <laughs> but she, her trust was misplaced. You know you could misplace your trust? It'll be fine. The car, the car will make it. 
And it's like, no, the car ain't going to make it. <laughs> you shouldn't have put your trust in the car. Now you're stranded, right? You can misplace your trust. But if you put your trust in him, he will never let you down. You'll never regret it. I want you to bow your head.